Today we're talking about how to fly, or more specifically, how to take off, using a super suit made of metal, iron metal. Sometimes you've got to run before you can walk. The heads-up sketch was put together because we wanted to do a cool heads-up display using HitFilm 4 Express, but we couldn't resist doing a few effects in HitFilm 4 Pro as well. For example, the takeoff, the repulsor boots and the smoke were done using HitFilm 4 Pro's particle simulator, as well as some filmmaking trickery. Here's how we did it. Here's what we started with. If you check out the behind the scenes, you'll see that we achieved this by raising Kirsty's legs up with a pole while she sat on the table. Obviously, if you're putting a pole underneath an actor's legs and spinning them over the back of a table, you want to make sure there's something nice and soft on the other side, because that's completely what we did. Kirsty was entirely safe the entire time. We shot a separate plate with a practical light, which was comped in to remove the unrealistic shadows on the floor, because those bright jets would have eliminated the shadows. The boot movement was tracked, and then two separate particle systems were added, one for the repulsor jets and one for the smoke. A nice big juicy flare was slapped on top of the whole thing, and we even did some relighting using mocha to make it look like the boots were being illuminated by the jets. Mix it all together and you end up with something like this. It's time to get our VFX on. In this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the particle effects. If you want more details on any of the other techniques, do let us know in the comments. We've got project files to download so you can follow along, so hit the link in the info card or the video description. Tracking the boots is a really good thing to do in Mocha Hit Film, which is included with Hit Film 4 Pro. So I'm going to add my video clip to the editor timeline and then choose Open with Mocha Hit Film from its menu. This will send the video clip over to Mocha. So Mocha uses planar tracking, which is able to sample a large area and is perfect for tricky shots where there's a lot of blurry movement and a lack of sharply defined detail, as with these boots. Axel's got a whole series on using Mocha, so do check those out if you're not familiar with it. I want to track two areas for this boot, so that I can add a jet to the front and to the back. I'll draw a large, roughly oval shape around this front section, and another one somewhere back here on the heel. I can then track through the shot to gather the data. Mocha will track both areas at the same time. So to get this back into hit film, I'll select the first track, then go to the Export Tracking Data option. Set the format to hit film transform data and save it out. This creates a new composite shot, which I can then bring into hit film. Okay, I'll export the second track using the same method. Right, back over in hit film, I'll choose import composite shot and bring in both of those new comps. First the front jet and then the rear jet. They get imported as new composite shots with all the relevant media brought in as well. Check out this point layer for the rear jet. See how it's tracked on perfectly and even has the correct rotation as the boot moves around. That's the power and ease of Mocha right there. I'm going to copy this point layer and then switch over to the other composite shot containing my front jet track and I'll paste in the rear one. This means we now have both tracks in the same timeline. I'm going to click the gear icon down here and rename the comp to main comp so that I know this is my main working timeline. I'll actually delete the imported rear jet stuff from the media panel because I don't need it anymore. We now have our video with two rock solid tracked point layers. I'm just going to rename some of these layers to make sure everything is nice and clear. And we're now ready to start adding some effects. In the project zip you downloaded, you'll find a preset file called Jets. To add this to your effects library, right click anywhere in the effects panel and choose Import Presets. You can select that Jets preset to bring it in. I'll now search for Jets and drag it down onto the timeline. This creates a new particle simulator layer. The first thing we want to do is attach our particle emitters to the boots. Inside the particle sim, open up the emitters group, then the left boot front emitter and find its shape group. In here you can attach the emitter to the front jet layer, and the same can be done for the rear one. I'll also make sure the position properties are zeroed out so that they're not offset at all. And finally, our circular emitters are a bit too big for the framing of this shot, so I'll drop their scale down to 50%. You'll find that when you're using presets, it won't always work immediately in every shot you drop it into. You're often going to have to customise it to suit the particulars of the shot. And now, scrubbing through, we have our jet thrusters attached to the boots. Spiffy! The next thing to do is set up our floor, so that these jets aren't just disappearing down and out of shot. 
Having this as a static shot without any camera movement makes this pretty easy, as we can simply estimate the scene by eye. I'm going to create a new plane and use this as the floor, so that I can reuse it for any other particle layers we make. I'll switch the plane into 3D and then flip it on the x-axis by 90 degrees, so that it's flat on to the camera. Next up we need some kind of reference for our scene. Conveniently the boots actually start off flat on the floor at the beginning of the shot, so we can assume that on any of those early frames the tracked points are more or less at the floor position. So before we start moving our floor around let's set it up as a deflector. This particle simulator already has a deflector added to it, so all you have to do is go into its properties and attach it to that floor layer. So I'll now make sure I'm on a frame where the boots are on the floor, and I'll move my 3D floor plane down in the shot until it's connecting with and deflecting the particles. We can assume that this is the correct position for our floor. This isn't an especially scientific way of doing things, but for a static shot like this it does work just fine. Ok, let's customise the look a bit, because everything is a bit big and over bright right now. The quick way to do this is to simply go up to the Particle Simulator Layer's main transform group, and drop the scale down. About 65% is working for me. I'm also going to scoot the entire particle layer to the right on the timeline, so that it only kicks in when the boots start lifting off the ground. If I put my playhead where the boots start lifting, I can then shift the particle layer along to get my timing just right. Syncing up your CG effects with the practical things that are happening in your shot are a big part of making visual effects work. Ok, time for some more fine tuning. I'm going to focus on the front jet first. The main issue I have at the moment is that the sparks are lasting too long, and you can see they're flicking off in all these weird directions, which you don't want them to do. So, I'm going to go into the left boot front emitter, and go into the particle systems, where I'll find the sparks movement group, and drop the lifetime down to 0.5. This means that the sparks are going to disappear before they start firing off in unexpected directions. I'm now going to select the plasma particle system, and switch over to the lifetime panel. The lifetime panel is where you can change the behaviour of individual particles over their lifetime. There's already an alpha gradient going on, but I'm going to add additional tabs at the end so that it fades out completely, and then I'll select this second tab and click somewhere in the middle to copy it. By adjusting this middle one I can now keep the plasma jets nice and visible while they're in the air, but have them disappear quickly once they're hitting the ground. I'm going quite quickly through a lot of these settings, so do check out Axel's tutorials on the particle simulator if any of this is making your brain hurt. With particle effects you can tweak it forever, but I'm going to park it just about here. Rather than manually tweak the rear jet to match all those settings I just changed, I'm actually just going to delete it and then copy the one from the front. I do need to then change the emitter to using the rear track of course. So I'm pretty happy with the general particle behaviour. It's fast and looks nicely intense. So next up I'm going to add additional effects to enhance the look. Currently we have the jets being this orangey colour, but it's not quite as punchy as I'd like. So I'm actually going to grab the hue, saturation and lightness effect, and use that to drop the saturation all the way down to zero, leaving us with a monochrome result. Next up I'll grab our trusty colour vibrance effect, and add that, which creates a much punchier, more intense orange glow. One of the cool things about colour vibrance is that it retains all the intensity while adding the hot colourisation. It's also super easy to tweak the colours. If I want blue jets, it's really not a problem. Lastly, I'll add heat distortion, because heat distortion makes everything better. I'm going to increase the scale and the distortion settings, creating an undulating kind of look, and I'll put diffusion strength all the way up to give it this localised blurring. You can see how the heat distortion gives the jets an unpredictable, more gaseous appearance. These jets are pretty bright, so I'm going to add a new plane layer above everything else, and then add the light flare effect. In here I'm going to switch it over to the sun glare type, and set the hotspot position to one of the boot tracks. It's then a matter of fine tuning the effect to get the exact look that I want, which in this case is a nice diffuse glow on top of the particles. I'm going to use the colour vibrance effect again to give it some oomph, and then apply a blur to soften out the flare in general. Light flares and particle simulations share a common factor, which is that they often come down to experimentation. It's not always possible for me to explain the exact process by which I arrived at a finished effect, because it's more of an organic, evolving thing. Tweaking this, adjusting that. 
It's about familiarizing yourself with the available options and understanding how they interact with one another. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate that flare and then, you guessed it, attach it over to the other jet. You can see now just how useful it is to have these points that can drive every single piece of our overall shot. It's now time to create some smoke. For this, I'm gonna create it from scratch rather than using a preset. So, find the particle simulator in the effects panel and add it sandwiched between the flares and the jets layers. And we're gonna do something a little bit like this. So in the emitter shape, I'll change it to circle and attach it to the front jet. I'll change its orientation by 90 degrees so that it's flat. I'll change the trajectory to cone and point it straight down by setting the Y rotation to minus 90. And I'll go for a pretty wide cone radius because we want the smoke to spray out over quite a wide area. I'll add a default force, which acts basically like gravity. And I'll set up my deflector to use the same floor plane as earlier. That's why it's useful to have an actual plane as your floor, because you can share it across multiple layers. In the particle system's appearance, I'll switch to a built-in texture and select Smoke Thickness 3, because that is my favorite of all the smoke thicknesses. To stop the textures from all looking the same, in appearance variation, I'll change the texture angle to 1, which means that each texture can appear at any particular angle, and I'll change the angle per second to 30, so that they're all rotating just a little bit. I'll boost the speed up to 2000, drop the bounce down to zero because smoke doesn't tend to actually bounce very much, and the friction down to 10. In movement variation, I'm gonna add some variety to the effect. So in life, I'll add 0.5 seconds, scale, I'll add 30%, and speed, I'll put to 100. With something like smoke, you don't want it to all behave identically, and adding variation adds this little element of chaos to the results. In the lifetime panel, I'm gonna to go to alpha and switch it over to being a gradient. I can then add some tabs so that each particle fades in and out over its lifetime. In scale, I'm gonna add a handle at the end and increase it up to 200%. This means that the smoke is gonna get bigger as it fades out. Lastly, I'm gonna add our good friend heat distortion because heat distortion makes everything better. Heat distortion does genuinely really help with smoke effects, adding an organic, chaotic element which is hard to build into the actual particle behavior. Keep massaging the shot until it looks right. In this case, I think we could definitely do with far more smoke particles. And that should give you something a bit like this. All that remains is to duplicate the emitter and assign it over to the other tracked point so that we have those two separate smoke emitters. So every single setting I've just shown you is entirely up for grabs. This is what I came up with, but I'll bet you guys can do better. Give it a whirl and see what kind of jet and smoke effects you can come up with. The Particle Simulator in HitFilm 4 Pro really is infinitely customizable, so don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. How much do you think that helmet cost? As always, do what you need to get the shot. Don't kill yourself trying to create a scientific simulation. We had a ton of fun making Heads Up. What would you like to see us do next? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.